Hello friends. Today we are going to have a video lecture on the setup for analytics environment in R programming. In this, we are going to learn about R programming, R Studio, Git, and how we manage your projects using the R files. The steps we are going to follow is we'll download and install R, R Studio, Git, and Subversion. We'll see how to sign up for the GitHub. We will then we'll try to configure R Studio and Git, and we will see how to perform push and pull using Git in R Studio. While doing this thing, Mac users have, since they have already installed Git and Subversion, you will only be required to do the settings after having created a GitHub ID. Well, uh, as uh, for better project management, I would recommend that you should create files. You should create a folder structure in your file system as follows. Either you can do it either C, D or E drive. And here it has been shown in the A as if you are trying to create the folders in E drive, that is R work. Under, uh, under R work, you can have a folder called R projects and R ebooks. Under R projects, you will put all your project file, all your projects inside, inside this folder. And under R ebooks, you can put all the E resources related to your R programming. As far as the setup of R is concerned, R is uh, the basic R has been available at the CR inside, which has been listed in this in this in this slide here. the The latest version, uh, as I'm recording this video, is 3.5.1. You can download from this URL. So you need to download this exe file as per the version, as per the file system you are using, and then run the setup as an administrator. Then you need to go to the R Studio. R Studio is nothing but an integrated development environment interface for R programming. It helps you in managing your projects uh, when done in R programming. So you can download the version and and this the type of file and depending on the file system you have in your computer also after having installed r studio you can you can add the r studio icon into the start to the start menu for easy access of r studio git and the subversion help you track your files and and keep a copy of the same files into your into your git into a git profile which is created in the cloud so i would recommend that you install this uh, git uh, uh, with our studio here i'll be helping you install uh, configure git with our studio in the next few slides so these are this is the url for for downloading um, the git and svn file while silk svn file comes in a zip folder first you will have to unzip it and then install it mac users again need not install this because this is already pre-installed in their in their laptops When you are again installing Git and SVN, please make sure that you do it as an administrator. Otherwise, the path of the installation file is uh, done at different location, which is required to be configured in your R Studio. So in case you happen to install it in another folder, please do make a note where your Git and SVN are have been finally installed. So this is, uh, uh, when you have installed R, it is very important that you install R first and then R Studio and then Git and SVN as per the sequence. Having installed uh, all these uh, uh, software applications, 
you need to open the R Studio and and then uh, do certain settings in uh, in R Studio. Like first, you will have to go to the menu, tools, global options, and under that you will have to check the whether your R is pointing to the right version we have installed. And also you can set the default working directory when not in folder. That means that means if the files if the file in if files are being created when they are not in folder, where should these files lie? They should preferably not lie in your my docs and desktop to keep them organized. And under the uh, code tab, you can soft wrap our source files. Uh, this will help you when your code uh, the code which you type and becomes longer than a uh, certain number of characters, it, it does not wrap. And this particular option, when you enable your wrapping will take place, you will be able to uh, see the files. You will be able to see the code wrapped up. Then the next tab which you need to open is Git SVN. First you need to enable the, uh, first you need to enable uh, the version control. Then you need to check whether this is pointing to the correct version. The Git is pointing to the correct version uh, which has been installed in your file system. And same is for SVN. And then, then there's another option of creating a SHA key which will create, it is nothing but a passphrase. You can type your full name also with spaces. It should be of minimum certain length so it, you can type your name also and create that as a key this is used for uh, uh, synchronizing your files between your local computer and your git profile in the cloud after having done this you should restart your r studio just to confirm that your parts have been correctly configured then you need to go to the github profile uh, where you will be required to create your own ID. In this case, we are referring to the Henry Harbin Analytics profile ID. And when, when you create this profile ID, it'll ask you, it'll ask you for an email ID, uh, your user ID. Uh, you need to give that in a, correct, in a correct manner. And also you will be sent a verification mail, which is very important to create repositories. Repositories are the place uh, the places where your files will be kept uh, similar to projects. And uh, having created a Git profile, you can click on this uh, Henry Harvin Git profile and you can follow. And this is a place where you will be able to find the code there. After, once you follow the Git profile, it will be easy for you to access the code for the, Git, for the Henry Harvin analytics projects. Then, then you need to uh, go to your R Studio and uh, s try to and create a project, new project. And once you create creating a new project, you need to select the version control, and then the option will come on the gate. And uh, when you select it, it'll, it'll prompt you for your URL. And this URL you need to copy from your Git uh, Git repository, having created one re one repository in analytics, like analytics one here. You copy that URL automatically. This path will get the parts of the path will get copied into the relevant box, and you will find the and at the last part of the repository name being reflected under the project directory. And also it will tell you that you are trying to create a project as a subdirectory of of the folder. So please go to browse and select the correct folder, the folder where you had created our projects, either C, D, or E drive. Having create, now once you select on the uh, create project, uh, 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 the the uh, the menu, the, the our, our project will configure itself pointing to your, the, the project name, which you can see from the top right hand corner of your R Studio. Then you need to create a small, small sample file. 
and you can go to file new r script and type some command like empty cars is a data set and woman is also data set when you type this empty cars and on woman you will find the output being displayed in the console window save this file and give it a name like file1.r then go to the click go to the uh, r studio menu you will find a git tab on the right hand side click on the uh, click on the commit uh, button a pop up will open up select all files which have been marked yellow when you have selected this type a small message it could be a small character or it could be today's date and press commit button when you press the comment button a message like a warning will be displayed will be looking like this git configure global user email that that basically is telling you that i as of now i do not know the email and the username uh, under which you are configuring your git profile copy this part of the code to copy this part of the two lines into your file on the left hand side of so the source window and edit this u uh, uh, user email and user dot uh, name to your particular ids now now you need to open go to the again go to the git tab and there would be a shell button there there would be a shell button click on the shell button and type type these lines one by one and click enter after having typed successfully you can close this window and for all the users who face the problem of this particular git window not opening up you can do the same thing by by typing git bash through your windows start menu this normally happens if your git is git is not enabled into your windows path having typed these two lines there you restart your r, r studio again and and please ensure when you are restarting it your project name is still reflecting the the the, uh, the repository name which you created now again you can type on the click button uh, on the on the uh, git button and then type commit and select all those yellow files which have newly been created and type a message small message at today's at today's date and now when you click on the uh, commit button it will not prompt you with the same error uh, the warning message asking for the username rather now what you can do is uh, the files will be cleared and it will be uh, committed now you can click on the push button and when you click on the push button it will ask you for your username and password of git and all the settings which you are doing it is happening only once you can provide your username and uh, user name uh, or, or email id to, and password of your git profile here if the if the username and password are correctly entered you will find uh, the files being pushed and if you click on the push button again it says everything is up to date now you can go to your web browser and open up your git profile and under the analytics one which if you have created that as the first repository refresh this repository and you will find the files there in this way you can keep creating files or keep updating your code on the existing file and what you need to do after that is you need to go to git by git tab and select a commit button select also all those files which have been changed or newly created type a message click on the commit button and then push and then then go back to the browser and see if the files have been updated so this is uh, some urls have been put here uh, for your watching and this particular video is also going to help you in in configuring in installing r r studio git and svn now i'm going to take you to the r studio environment where i'll help you in configuring all these steps here
So in this you can see, of if I've installed R, you will be able to find the basic R version here. And I have now installed R Studio also, and I have added that button into my taskbar. Now this is R Studio environment, and you will find it. Uh, it is an I basic and an ID. It's got a lot of many window panes out here. And uh, what I will do is first I'll go to tools and go to options. These are the places where I would like to see whether my settings has been properly done or not. And then when I press on when I when I when I go to tools, global options, under the general tab, I'll find it is pointing to the version of R which I have would have installed. In one system, you can have multiple versions of R, and at this stage, I'm pointing you into the latest version. <coughs> now it is telling you default working directory while not in a project. I have already created a folder in my D drive, uh, R work, and also I'm going to create more folders like R work and R projects here. And before before I point it to that project folder, I will first go to my file system. I'll go to my D drive and under D drive, I will have a folder called R work. And this is the place where I would create a folder called R projects. And also I will have R ebooks. Why I'm creating a folder called R ebooks? I would like to keep my ebooks related to R here. Also, at times we, we get data sets from various places. I can have R data sets also. This helps me in case you want to create new folders for your Python programming or any other programming. That's why I prefixed it by R so that I can easily identify uh, which programming tool I'm working on. Now I go to browse window and now I'll go to D drive and go to under D drive and look for R work and I select the R projects here. So what does it basically mean? It's a default working directory when not in a project. Now you can look around these uh, tabs and you can select which one of them you may be wanting. But I would recommend certain minimum configuration at this stage. When I click on the uh, code tab, there is called soft wrap R source files. This is going to help you wrapping your files here. There are other options which you can select show margin. You can select the show margin length and the other options available to you. This is like any MS Office application and you can select the options accordingly. Appearance. Now, if in case I want my code to be of larger size, if I want to zoom everything up, I can do 120% and I can also select a little larger font for a better visibility. Now, when I say apply button, you see our studio getting, uh, changing its config. Now you can see a font size, which is better. I can go back to global options and this is where I was looking at the appear. And now I've said zoom 120% and also change into the editor. So that means I have zoomed each and every menu buttons out here. Then I will go to the pane layout. I'll see this is a, so there are four panes in our studio. And the default uh, panes are the first, the top left side is a source window where I'll be typing my code and saving it. There are certain tab buttons on the right hand side. There is a there is a console window where the files get the code get executed, and these are the various tabs related to your files, plots, and packages. And this this is the site where you can configure uh, your CRN site, basically a repository from where you would be using downloading the various packages. You can change the default repository out here. Then this is Markdown, which is used. Uh, for your project management. Now I'll come to Git SVHN. This is the place you should ensure that you have enabled the version control and your Git files are pointing to the right uh, right location of Git. Otherwise, you can go to the browse and point to the right uh, and find the, the exact location of Git. This is the default location where Git and SVN are normally installed. But if you're not doing it as a 
administrator, they normally get installed in different folders. So please make sure that you are trying to install this Git and SVN as administrator. Uh, and in this way, it will be available to the other users of the same computer. Then you need to create a RSA key and the RSA key is uh, just a simple thing. You can type your name. Create RSA key. So it'll be just a public key, uh, public private key man, uh, management. So now I have configured my, I've done the basic settings in R Studio, and then I say apply, and I check for my Git uh, location. Now I say apply, and then I say okay. So this is the settings required at an R Studio. Now I will go to my browser. I'll go to my browser. I will, I'm going to create a folder. I am going to create a new repository. So this is the repository. And if you can see from here, you can check your profile. So this is the repository of Henry Harvin Analytics. And I'm going to create my repository here where I will be keeping my files on the R source code. So now I say new repository. This is what I do, click. And then I say analytics one. And I can write a description saying my first repository in Git. If you have already been doing it, you can put your command uh, to work on analytics. You can write a description so that you remember what this repository contains. So all these repository by default are public. And uh, since this is the, the free version allows the public, if you want to, uh, if you want it private, you will have to pay for it. And then you click on the create repository. When you click on the create repository, a screen will change and it will say the repository has been created. So these are some command function, which you can use it to, um, for backing up uh, from your computer to other. But I am going to tell you a simple way uh, in which you can use our studio for this. So I will go to the URL here. I'll copy this Git repository. This one, no, I will not copy from here, but I would rather copy this from my browser and say Control C. Having done that, I will go to my uh, R Studio here, and then now I will say File. I will say New Project. When I am doing New Project, the first tab which opens up is New Directory, Existing Directory, or you want a version control. So I want version control here, and then I select on this. There are two options here, Git and uh, server version. So I will choose a Git, uh, clone my project from a Git repository. Now what I've done, I've already created a repository at the uh, Git here. I'm, go I I'm going to paste that URL out here. And you see from here, now the analytics, the last part of the, uh, the, uh, the URL is copied to this as a project name directory. Now it is telling me create project as a subdirectory of. I need to select browse, go to browse, go to your folder. Let's say in my case, it was the D drive, R work, and under go to R projects and say open. Now basically it is telling this is the Git URL. This is the project folder in your local file system which gets created. And where it gets created is this particular uh, for, uh, project, uh, the project uh, folder in my local file system. And then I need to say create project. Now I'll start cloning it. Having, if you do this cloning is successful, that means you're able to reach that, uh, your URL there, you will find screen changing a little bit. You will find analytics for the repository name being visible on the right hand side. <coughs> uh, and this particular path being shown as a D, R work, R projects and analytics one. And there are so certain default files which create gets created when you use a Git as a project management tool for synchronizing a file. The environment is clean because you don't have any files, you don't have any variables as of now. And these are the menu options which you can pursue to understand what are the other options available in our studio here. The next step I'm going to do is I'm going to create certain files here. I'm going to find new R script. The moment I say, new R script. Now my source window gets opened up and now I can type 
uh, uh, any coding here, I can say, I can hash anything I put with the hash first, it, it makes it as a comment. I say my first file in R. And then I'm going to type empty cars is a data set. Then I say control. All commands which are uh, typed in source window, they can be run using control enter. So now you can see from here, the, uh, the it has got executed. I run this line so they can see the output here. Now this is nothing but a data set which looks like a rows and columns of some cars mentioning about this mileage, the cylinder, gears, etc. If I want to see a, another, another popular data set which is used as a woman, this is nothing but height and weight of uh, some American woman. Having typed some code there, now I need to save this file. And there now you can see uh, there is a uh, line at 80 columns. So this is what we had set in the uh, uh, global options code code tab. Now I'll just press the save button from here. This save button or the other one save button here. This particular other save saves all the open files. But since I have only one file, I'll just save this button here. And now once I press the save button, it by default it'll go and save in the project folder in the repository folder here. So I will type file one. The moment I type file one, you can see the file one being visible on the right hand side of the R Studio pane. That means a one new file has been created. And now I will go to the Git tab here. When I click on the Git tab, it shows certain files in yellow color. That basically tells that these are new files which have been created, which have not yet been pushed into the uh, Git repository and the R in your cloud. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to click on the commit button here. And when I click on the commit button, a new tab opens up. I need to select all these files, which I need to push them into Git. So these are the files selected and I'm going to type my first commit. So any message would do, any single character would do. Basically, it just will help you remind you when did you save this file and what if you made any changes, what were the changes done here? So now I say I press on the commit button. When I say press on the commit button, it is basically telling me, tell me who you are. And why is telling me? Because it does not know where should I push this, which profile should I push it? Because it has not yet stored your username and password. So what I'll do is for my easy management, uh, so that I remember the correct name, I copy this part of the code, part of the warning message, and close this tab. So I'll close this also, and I paste them here. When I paste them here, and now what I'll do is I'll change this into my email ID. I'll say LMS. And also I will change it as to my profile ID and what should be my profile ID? This is my profile ID. When you can see your profile ID from here or you can see from the URL path. You can copy this from here also. So what I've done is I've created, I've updated the user email and user name with respect to my, my uh, Git profile here. Again, I'll go to the Git tab and then click on this gear symbol and there would be a shell button here. When I click on the shell button, a new tab will open up, which will have certain uh, colored fonts here. And this is very important to understand because this is actually give you a hint Yes, it is the Git shell which is opening up. And for all those who are not able to open this, what they can do is they can go to this search button and find out and, fi and look for the Git bash installed here. Now you can see Git, Git, 
there would be a git bash here. Either you can do it from this point, or if you in this case not opening up, you can go to this git bash and use the same tab here. So I'm going to copy this line. I'm going to copy this line, or I'm going to type this, or I can type this also. Git config. Then the next line. Yes. Now I can close this tab. And now I need to do is go back to Git again, click on the commit button, and the same thing will open up. And now I can type any same message or any character, my commit. It's a commit. And now you'll see that the warning message is not being displayed. It is basically telling you three files have been changed, some 21 insertions have happened, and it is creating some mode. This is how the Git works. And you need to really get into all this. You just need to understand this message should come up. Basically, now it successfully committed the, and now it understands where my code will be sent. But I, there's one more option because I, I, sh, I sh, there's not, I have still not entered my user the password. Uh, where should it store? So what I'm going to do now is, uh, now I have the second, the next stage of the, and git configuration is pushing. I need to do push here. When I'm doing push here, it'll open up a pop-up where it'll ask me for my username and password of git. This would be the last setup in the git settings. Now you see the git, this username coming up, pop-up. Now you need to type your username, which was Henry. Henry have an analytics here, and I need to type Please make sure that you are aware of your username and password at this stage. Uh, and then you say press login. So it has pushed the files and I only close it. Again, what I do, I try just to try to push again, just to check whether it's asking for username password again. No, it will tell you basically it's everything up to date, right? You can close this tab now, and now you can go to your browser, and this was the repository which you had created at that time, analytics one. I need to just refresh it, and I want to check whether the files have been pushed there or not. Here you can see, this is the last message I typed, this is two minutes ago, and this is the file which I created, and now I click on this, you can file empty cars and woman, woman uh, command being visible out there. So this is the way you can use now. Now the configuration for Git has been done in your particular laptop. You need not configure it again. Uh, if you happen to uh, use another computer or a laptop again, you will have to do it in the same file system. And this is really going to help you uh, when you move your files from office to uh, uh, when you move, when you work in office and home on the same uh, same projects, this will help you synchronize. And now, just taking you to the Git uh, profile here, you can just look at your, and you can see now that uh, it has started updating your contributions. And this is very important. You can use your Git profile in your CVs or resumes, which is uh, basically demonstrate that you have been doing. Uh, data analytics projects and creating repositories are there. So people are going to look at your repository, they are going to see uh, what type of coding, what type of data analysis you are, have been doing here. So this is a, now I'll, what I'll do is I'll create another file and now uh, and another file and see 
how to push them. I'll say file new. This is my second file. I can see my second file. So here I'll type the iris data set. This is iris is also a data set. Now you can see it is iris is a flower. As certain dimensions are being displayed there. I will now press the save button and now I say file two. Now, since I had dead season changes here, I will just put a comment in this line because tomorrow I may need to help somebody or may need to configure it, check what time, uh, what configuration settings I give. So I'm just saving it here and pressing the save all button. Now, the moment I press save all button, you will find firstly the file two has been created. And secondly, you'll find any new file getting created will have a yellow color and any file being modified will be a blue color with M there. So I can do select all both these files. Then press a commit button and type commit to any, it could be any character. And then I say commit. When I press a commit button and then close, you know, you see the moment you put comment, the file gets removed from here. And then I say push. Close button. Now I close it and then I go back to my Git profile, go see my analytics one, and I, I should be able to find file two here. Again, you can see 20 seconds, 27 seconds ago, I've been able to add this and also commit the file one. And now you can see the iris uh, being visible out here. So let me just take you back again and just tell you the critical points of inst installing the Git here. The points to remember here are firstly, firstly you should be able to download the 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 relevant Git and SVN version from the the URLs mentioned in this particular slide here, and you need to see that Git and SVN have been correctly configured in your R Studio. You have to create a SJ key, which is also non mandatory, but if you create it, it is better. You should restart your R Studio after that. You should have your Git profile and create any analytics project repository there. And then you, when you're creating a project in R Studio, please make sure uh, that you create as a Git SVN and you save your project files into a particular folder, C, D, or E. That is a better way. Don't try to put in your my docs or desktop. What actually happens? Most times your computer creates a problem and you need to take a backup or you need to log in as a different user. It is always better to put it in a different folder where it can be accessed easily. Then you have to type and create a new file, save that file, and then uh, configure it for the first time by, by you uh, typing those git configuration user.email and uh, global global user dot, e, uh, dot name. And then it'll ask you for your username and password. If you're teaching up to this point, that means you're kind of following the correct steps. And then when you, uh, then you need to check your repository in the cloud and you will find the files. There. So this is the procedure, create a file, save the file, a given name, save a file, and do a commit, uh, select those five which have been changed, and then push, and then check on the R Studio. So this has been uh, the, so there are some screenshots in this PowerPoint, which you can have a look at it. And this is the simple explanation of uh, configuring uh, R Studio with Git, which will help you, which is going to help you in managing our files and this will go in a long way in your project management tool. Thank you so much and uh, please keep watching the video series on data analytics from Henry Harvin. It'll bring on more, 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 more topics for your easy understanding of data analytics. Thank you.